Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Rob. And I'm Gertie. And we'd like to introduce our Acrofighter product to you. Now, some of you may already be aware of this product if you've been following our Contamination Friday LinkedIn page. Um, since the beginning of the year, we've been trying to educate users on the issues you have with water and fuel. Now, we're going to answer any questions at the end. So if you can pop your email address and your question in the chat, then that help us. If we can't answer it at the end, then we can get back to you with an email. So I'm going to share my screen now, and then we're going to start the presentation. So we're all aware of the issues with biofuel being blended into diesel now. Um, we're starting to get ever increasing percentage of it, potentially up to 10% soon. Now, this makes the fuel hygroscopic. So when it's sitting in the storage tank, it's constantly sucking the moisture out of the air, reacting with the fuel and potentially causing sludges and biofilms. Now, these types of contamination end up blocking your filters on your vehicles, on your engines, and also on your dispenser pumps. Um, you start getting pump damage, whether that be the injector pumps on the vehicle or actually the dispensing pumps. Now, the modern diesel engines use incredibly high pressure common rail systems where they're very, very intolerant to water and you'll start getting corrosion and injector damage. And eventually you'll just end up with poor fuel efficiency overall for the actual diesel engine that's running. So in the industry, we know it's actually inside the storage tank over time that causes issues. The problem for fuel suppliers is end users often associated with fuel quality and what's been delivered, although we know it's actually the tank that's causing the issue. So when we talk about water, water can manifest itself really in three ways. You've got the free water layer at the bottom of the tank, which is really visible. That comes from condensation inside the tank, running down the inside, potentially a poorly maintained tank, so you've got rainwater ingress. You've got suspended water, so it's actually bound to the fuel. Um, if you were to hold a glass of that fuel up to the light, it'd be a cloudy consistency. And then you've got the emulsified water. So the emulsified fuel is effectively where the water and the fuel mixed together have gone through some pressure changes, whether that's through an engine injector pump and then a return line back to the tank or a vacuum. It's basically almost molecularly bonded to the fuel and pretty difficult to remove the water from emulsified fuel. So unlike standard filters, and different absorbers on the market, Aquafire is an all around complete solution. Not only did it take the free water out, it takes the suspended and emulsified water out of fuel. In the picture, we've got two examples, both samples from exactly the same tank. The one on the left has an Aquafire product in there. The one on the right has an alternative. So the Aquafire is actually taking out the bound suspended and free water. The one on the right only takes out any free water. So we've got a little video now to play. Now, the bottle on the right has got the free water. You can see the water, the diesel fuel does look quite clear and bright, but you've actually got a visible layer of free water at the bottom. The one on the left is the bound water, where you can see some of it has dropped out of suspension to a small free water layer, but mainly the fuel looks cloudy and saturated with water. So as we put the aquifer in, the polymer inside will start to turn a bright pink colour as it starts to remove the water from the fuel. Now you can see the level of the liquid in the jar. When it's removed, you can see it's turned bright pink. The free water has actually been removed and any bound water that was inside that sample. Now the clever one, this one here on the left, the bound water has actually been removed as well. And you can see how clear and bright that diesel sample now is. And you can see the amount has gone down for the water line and it's now saturated and full on the aquafighter. So with the aquafighter, the tank owner simply adds it into the largest opening on the tank and then you retrieve it and replace it when it's full. There's three steps in how you use it. So step one, once the aquafighter is in the tank, it forces a chemical reaction that pulls the fuel apart and separates the water from the fuel molecules Step two, captures the water inside the fabric membrane by bonding it to the special aquafighter polymer. And then step three, the aquifer is releasing clear and bright water-free fuel back into the tank with the aid of gravity and fuel movement. So aquifer reduces the water content below 75 parts per million. 
This exceeds the EM standard for diesel fuel, and it's been tested in a lab to prove it. So Aquafire, offer it alongside your fuel. It helps keep your, helps your customers keep their diesel clean and looking as good as the day you deliver it. So Aquafire is brilliant, but it's not a magic. So prevention is better than cure. So on this slide, we can see we've got a traffic light system where you can actually use the actual Aquafire product. So tank number one, <clears throat> the fuel looks in pretty good condition. There may be a free water layer at the bottom or there may still be suspended water in it. Pop the aqua fighter in there, leave it to work. It's gonna work brilliant on that tank. Tank number two, you can see, has actually got suspended water in the fuel. You can see the cloudy color of it. Perfect for the aqua fighter. Hasn't really got any dirt or bacteria by the looks of it. Pop the aqua fighter in, bring it back to clear bright fuel. Now, tank number three, it's got a high water content. You can see that it's a bit saturated and bound and suspended water in there, but it's actually got a bit of dirt and bacteria with the color you can see. Now, the aquifer will work, but the polymer has to be exposed to the fuel of the water to work. So potentially you could end up with the bacteria and the dirt actually hogging the membrane and stopping the aquifer from working. Tank number four, that's a big mess of a tank. Whatever you do, don't even use that fuel. Don't put it in anything of any value. That needs uplifting, cleaning the fuel, cleaning the tank. Once you put fresh fuel back in that tank, then put an aquifer in there as the prevention side and you won't have the issues what the state of that tank has in the future. So there's very, various models of the aquifer products made for different size storage tanks. We're now gonna take off our screen share and we're gonna start showing you a couple of examples of these. So the first one we're going to have a look at, the aquafighter, they all come in a separate bag. Um, this is ideal for you to store the aquafighter again if you're removing it from the piece of machinery you may be using it in to store it or to dispose of it correctly. Now, the first one is the finger filter. This one is designed for tanks up to 150 litres. Basically, you put it into the opening, 3.8 centimetres is what it minimum requirement. It'll go into the tank, ideal for plant equipment, ideal for small leisure craft, maybe small agriculture equipment like tractors. These aren't really designed to stay in there while they've been used because it can get tangled in the fuel pickup. So these are for mobile equipment where you can retrieve it, use it and move on from there. So the next one we have is a snake. Again, for a tank with a minimum of a 3.8 centimeter opening. This will take out about 500 milliliters of water. It's designed for tanks up to about 500 litres, so you're looking at like a generator belly tank, um, a combine harvester, larger agricultural machinery, um, or boats and transportable tanks. Um, again, you have your string to tie it off with your little latch, so you're always able to retrieve it and replace it when required. The next one we got is for our main static storage tank. So this is for ideal for your plastic storage tanks. This is the Anaconda. So this will go into a tank up to two and a half thousand litres. It's got weights inside of it. It'll go through a nine centimeter opening. So some of the smaller two and a half thousand liter plastic tanks from the popular manufacturers, you can put it through the inspection hatch, tie it off, leave it, suspend it in the fuel or drop it to the very bottom, depending on how you're going to install it. Perfect for the agricultural environment and small, smaller two and a half thousand liter tanks. Next to the range, we have the medium canvas. So this is made for tanks with a 12 centimeter opening. Again, plastic tanks with an inspection hatch. Um, you're looking about two and a half, uh, about 500 liters, sorry, up to 5,000 liters. So great for your plastic tanks, agricultural, anybody who's got a difficult to reach place where you can't actually get to the fuel with, with any machinery. It's got weight, so you can leave it either suspended at any level in the tank to take the fuel out, or you can leave it set at the bottom and take out any free water at the same time. And the final one we've got is a large filter, a large canvas. This one's designed to go into the, a large 10,000, five to 10,000 litre tank. Um, you can drop that in. It's got the same fixing methods as the others. Um, it'll redraw up to about four litres of fuel. Um, now, we've talked about plastic tanks, but you can actually install these on steel tanks. You just need your engineer to be able to fit them through the access hatch. We do also do some larger models for depot level filtration. Now, when Aquafighter first started in Norway, they were actually working on forecourt tanks, underground forecourt tanks, laying these aquafighters in on a mat 
and the larger depot tanks where they're hanging very large depot filters suspending from the roofs of the tanks. Um, that's how they came around. So if anybody's got any interest there, please let us know. We can talk to you a little bit more about those. So that concludes our visual presentation. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, we're just gonna have a little look at the, the chat now. Any questions you got while we are answering any, like we said earlier on, drop your email address with your question. If you don't get a chance today, um, we'll, we'll gladly answer them. Okay, we've got, let me look if I can try and see the screen. We've got one test. What are the lab tests you have that meet the EN standards, that prove it meets the EN standards? Right, we've got Seibolt Laboratories in Sweden have done all the lab tests. Um, we've got a lab test for 100% effective at removing water to less than 64 parts per million in the sample. Um, the reference sample started off at 363 parts per million and we managed to reduce that down to 64. When the sample was checked again after a week, I think it was, uh, it was down to less than 40 parts per million. And since then, there's been several thousand other tests done by Seibolt. That's that one. What's the other one there? What makes them different to the Simtech type filter? Well, the Simtech type filter, some of the other can, um, water removers on the market, they'll only do the free water. So they won't touch the suspended water. The type of polymer or type of system that they have is just detecting the free water, removing the free water. Um, the aquifer is totally different because it is removing the suspended and the bound water and the emulsified water from the fuel, which is something that none of the other types on the market do. That concludes the questions for now. Yeah, I don't think there's any other questions at the moment. If anybody's got any, like I say, please drop your email in the chat um, and we can come back to you with any other questions you might. Also, guys, thanks for attending the presentation. Don't forget, if you're not already following our LinkedIn page, follow it. We do a fuel contamination Friday series, which heavily features the aquifers and anything else we do in terms of fuel cleaning with a fuel research unit. Um, and I think that concludes our presentation for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.